my beloved brothers and sisters, if I were to tell you that I'm going to show you something that is better than the whole world and whatever it contains, what do you think it would be? So to put things into perspective, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us, and obviously this message comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us, where he says there is a certain thing. And there's actually more than one occasion when he said this is better than the whole world and whatever it contains. But I want to discuss one particular one that is the most prominent one, and it is, appears in a hadith that is absolutely authentic. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says a certain thing is better than the whole world and whatever it contains. Now, obviously, this is in value and in reward. I wonder what it is. Before I knew, many years back, when I was told there are certain things that are better than the whole world and whatever they contain, my mind started wondering. I started thinking, what could it be? And then I started thinking, do you know what is meant by better than the whole world and whatever it contains? So all the gold and silver, all the jewelry, the precious stones and minerals, the oil and gas, everything would be yours, right? Everything, the value of all of that, more than that would be yours. And all the clothings, the perfumes, the accessories, the watches, the cars, the aircraft, the, the boats, the seas, the mountains, the sceneries, the islands, the food stuff, whatever makes you happy. All of that, all of it, and even more, because the whole wide world from the beginning to the end and everything that it has, there is something, if you were to do it, you would actually achieve greater than all of that. So what exactly would I achieve? Allah says it is better than the whole world and whatever it has. Number one, the reward is greater than the whole world and whatever it has. Number two, it would help me gain paradise. And in paradise, I will definitely have way beyond the whole world and whatever it has. So it's amazing. Now, to start thinking what it might be, the first thing that comes to my mind or came to my mind many years ago, I was thinking it must be a very difficult task that will take a long, long time to do. Or it might be something that would be so difficult that many people would not be able to do it. And then when you start looking at the Prophet wasallam and the way he taught us, we are taught that the thing Allah loves the most is that you worship him alone. And the thing that upsets him the most is when you associate any partner in any act of worship with Allah. So we need to understand this. If I were to worship Allah alone, I will achieve so much. And if I were to associate partners with Allah, even in a single act of worship, I would lose so much. So I'm sure it's something connected to worship. And worshipping Allah alone, doing something for the pleasure of Allah, Allah alone. Yes, it is. My brothers and sisters, the hadith says, Rak'ata al-fajri khayrum min dunya wa ma fiha. The two voluntary units of fajr are better than the whole world and whatever it contains. In other words, the two sunnah of fajr are better than the whole world and whatever it contains. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, if I were to get up early and cleanse myself in preparation for salah, for the prayer, and then I were to commence by offering the two units of sunnah of fajr, and then I do my farad, which is also two units of fajr, subhanallah, those two that preceded the farad, they, their value is greater than the whole world and whatever it contains. So imagine the farad itself, farad meaning the compulsory, that which is compulsory. Imagine that, subhanallah. If Allah loves the two sunnah of fajr so much, imagine how much he loves that which is farad because I know of a hadith, qudsi. Qudsi means 
where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells you that Allah said the following. So Allah said, there is nothing more loved to me than that which I have made compulsory. Well, from that hadith, I learned that if Allah loves something, he makes it compulsory. And if it is compulsory, it means he loves it so much. And if he has made something haram, it is something he dislikes so much. I also know that when Allah makes something compulsory, it's because the benefit is to me before anyone else. And I would know that if Allah has made something prohibited, it's because the harm is against me before anyone else. So if I were to get up early in the morning and to offer the two units of voluntary prayer prior to the two units of compulsory prayer of Fajr, then I will achieve a reward greater than the whole world and whatever is in it. And I will achieve more than what the whole world has and whatever is in it in terms of value. Subhanallah, subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, just imagine, there must be a very great benefit for getting up early. So let's get up very early, pre-dawn. And then we should do so with a smile. We're about to engage in an act of simple worship that is rendered for Allah alone. Yet it is the most uh, loved unto Allah, the five daily prayers. It is a pillar of Islam. Just preceding that which is compulsory, we, do, we offer two voluntary units of prayer for Fajr. Raka'ata al-Fajri. The two units of Sunnah of Fajr are better than the whole world and whatever it has. Get up early, make sure you have enough time to fulfill the two units. Don't rush it and don't get up last minute. It's an honor. Try it out, see your life changing and see how beneficial it is to get up very early. I'm very sure that if Allah told you to get up early, there must be beyond just the benefit of worshiping Allah. There would be other benefits for yourself in the worship of Allah alone. So there it goes. My brothers and sisters, remember those of us who fulfill our prayers in the masjid. We need to get there early if we want this reward. We need to make sure that we fulfill the two units of sunnah, either before we go to the masjid or at the masjid, but prior to the iqama or the commencement of the compulsory prayer. The minute the compulsory prayer has started, you won't get the same reward. You won't. So, there is a hadith which says, إِذَا أُقِيمَتِ الصَّلَاةِ فَلَا صَلَاةَ إِلَّا الْمَكْتُوبَةِ If the obligatory prayer has just commenced with something known as the iqama or the takbir, some people call it the takbir. In that particular case, there is no prayer that you're allowed to fulfill except that farad. Unless you're completing something that you were already uh, into and you had already started. In that case, you can complete it, but you need to make sure that you don't start up a new prayer, especially a voluntary prayer. Once the, the compulsory has commenced, the vast majority of scholars actually say it's prohibited. There are some scholars who say it's okay, but this hadith negates that. It actually says you must make sure that if the salah has started the farad, you join it. You make sure you're a part of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So either way, the importance here is actually of the two units of sunnah of fajr. If you want a reward more than the whole world and whatever it has, and obviously you will be blessed. And with that blessing, your day will be much better. And as you commit to these two units on a daily basis, you will definitely be a better person. You will be content. You will be a happier person. Your relationship with Allah will become amazing because you're doing something that he loves. And at the same time, Imagine it will also benefit you, your health, your mind, your spirituality, your emotions, whatever else it may be, even your mental well-being. Get up in the morning, subhanallah. Breathe that fresh air. Wash yourself in a beautiful way. Stand facing the qibla and start off Allahu Akbar, knowing that what I'm doing right now is khayrum min dunya wa ma fiha better than the whole world and whatever it contains and then enjoy alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-rahmanir rahim 
Imagine the, the Quran that you're going to be reciting inside those two units that Allah says are better than the whole world and whatever they contain. How blessed is that recitation? That Quran that is recited early morning is being witnessed, witnessed by the angels and obviously witnessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, my sisters, imagine if Allah loves the two voluntary units of prayer of Fajr more than the whole world and what it has. What would be the value of the Farad? Amazing, amazing. Take your time in prayer. My brothers and sisters, this e khutbah is coming to you to explain to you very simply, in brief, the benefits of prayer. If voluntary prayer brings about so much of reward, imagine the compulsory. So take your time, consider it an honor. It will come to your assistance, not just when you die and getting into your grave, but in the hereafter, as well as helping you on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of this world and the next. Imagine when we get into the hereafter, what we will have. And Allah says, you did something that was so pleasing unto me and more beneficial than the whole world and whatever it had. And you did it every single day. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. My brothers and sisters, Allah is encouraging us very strongly to fulfill those two units of Sunnah of Fajr. Make sure you're not sleeping at a time when others are reaping the beautiful rewards that, the, that are being spoken about by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We all need to be scrambling for that reward. And when I say scrambling, I mean we need to make sure we're there and we get that reward. Everyone will get it, whoever fulfills this Salah. If you don't, guess what? There are billions of others who are doing it. Don't be the only one missing out. Let your home and your household not be the only home and household from among those that are missing this beautiful reward and in fact earning the displeasure of Allah by sleeping through prayer. May Allah strengthen all of us. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.